So let's get some instant reaction to Amazon's results. For that, Ross Gerber is joining us, the CEO of Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management. Uh, Ross, good to be able to catch up with you. And uh, it seems as though there was definitely, it looks like it definitely miss on the uh, on the bottom line for the third quarter EPS coming at $4.23 versus $4.59. But importantly, it's all about the outlook for tech companies, especially tech companies with a very large valuation. And it is disappointing investors. The stock is down, I see, by about 5% or so. Amazon is seeing their fourth quarter net sales of a range of 80 to 86.5 billion. The estimate is 87.2 billion. And uh, it seems as though, as though the stock is down to its lowest level since March. So what's your quick reaction here? Well, everybody guides down because then they can beat earnings. So I, I, I kind of dismiss all guidance from companies at this point because they're trying to lower expectations to beat. But so we don't really know how Q4 is going to be. But what we do know is that the costs are starting to creep up on Amazon, the one day shipping idea, which of course consumers love, but I don't know if consumers need, but it's certainly costing them a lot of money. They're seeing much more competition now from Walmart and some of the other retailers like Target that are continuing to improve their online businesses. And, and you know, ultimately they've got real competition with AWS now, as we saw with Microsoft's report, um, you know, the cloud business isn't a one uh, man game anymore. So, you know, Amazon, is reminding me a little bit of Netflix right now, where the company is a great company doing really well with huge numbers, but the valuation might be a bit high for where they're at in the maturity cycle. So huge numbers, but at the same time, what I always find astonishing is that, um, you know, that the sales, the outlook for net sales in the fourth quarter, again, it's 80 to $86 billion. The net profit or operating profit is 1.2 billion. Just just think about that for one second, right? You're making 80 billion in sales, but your profit is 1.2. The the operating margin is 4.5%. What's the valuation on this company? Well, I, I think that's the biggest thing about Amazon I don't like. And, you know, we own Amazon, but it's not per se like our all in bet by any means because of that issue. I like high margin businesses like Microsoft, for example. And Amazon is a little bit like Costco in a way where they just like try to sell a lot of stuff at cost and make up money on the prime membership. But what Amazon is gonna have to start thinking about is before they pour billions and billions of more into content like with Amazon Video when you have so much competition and it's just an add-on to prime services, is this really necessary when our margins are so low? And maybe we can't count on AWS to be this huge margin driver anymore. So, so I agree with you. I think Amazon has to really look at their business and, and be smarter about what they're doing because the costs are adding up for fulfillment and, and also from the competition. And, and what's interesting as well, as, as we move into the 2020 U.S. presidential election and you see the rise of Elizabeth Warren as the potential Democratic nominee, um, I'm wondering where the discussions are, the chatter surrounding Amazon and, and the businesses that it puts out of business uh, and, and what the Democrats might do about that. Of course, they've been, they've been talking about tech and large cap tech companies uh, for privacy issues, but what about for you know, the mom and pop shop? I mean, I know that this could go back to 30 years ago with respect to Walmart or what have you, but, but again, when you're looking at a behemoth making $80 billion in revenue for one quarter with 4.5% operating profit margins and, and pushing so many businesses out. At what point At what point does Washington get involved in this? Maybe they don't, I don't know, but, well, but you know, do you worry first about of all, this? You know, my, my wife just started a, a mom and pop business, I guess you could start, online beauty products called Wildling, and she's using Shopify. Shopify is the biggest risk to Amazon because mom and pops can get online and compete now with Amazon. They can compete on having unique products and. And, and great service and things that Amazon can't compete on. And any business now can have a global operation simply by signing up with Shopify, which we own a position in as well. It's been a phenomenal investment. Hmm. So I don't know if I would argue that Amazon's putting out the small business owner as much as the small business owner who hasn't adapted to the competition is gonna be put out of business. I also think you could argue Walmart and Target, and there's so many competitors to online sales. Amazon's just really good at it, and that doesn't mean that you've done something wrong. Right. So I, I think that 
um, and I said this yesterday, I, I think Facebook is in a different boat. I think Facebook is a problematic company that needs regulation. But I think when you look at the other companies like Google and Apple and Amazon, I think there is competition. I think there's things that could be improved in the way they do business that would be more competitive, but I don't think the government has a case against them. Well, and that's an interesting perspective in terms of mom and, mom and pops being able to use Shopify. That's, that's, a, that's a great... Uh, Oh, uh, wonderful websites. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's not what I was saying I was, because I can't say that on air. I don't think, but but uh, but but what I mean is that it, it's a great perspective to have in terms of you know small small companies can still uh, succeed in competition with Amazon through through Shopify. Absolutely, um, and especially in products that they're not good at, like beauty products, for example. Yeah, but but interestingly as well, Ross, there there are so many other companies though that do try to compete with Amazon and, and, you know, just because of the different models and perhaps different cultures and, and corporate fundamentals and beliefs they you know, they, 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 the bigger ones have even put up, been put out of business, but, but let's round with the conversation a little bit further. Cause I am curious about your, your views on Facebook, even though we're not watching them in the after hours today. Um, what is it you're not favorable towards? Well, first of all, you know, after watching Zuckerberg again, put out a bunch of, you know, BS basically in front of Congress, you know, why he's allowing completely deceptive political ads on the platform. You know, we've advertised on Facebook and they do fact check and look at all of the ads we place. Many of them aren't improved for a day or two. And so why they won't do that for political advertisers is insane. It, they had a direct effect on, on our election, on the Brexit election, and they've had a very negative consequence on society. And I think it's time for the government to come in and say, hey, look, Facebook and Instagram really isn't good for people in general. We've seen an uptick in suicides across the world, um, you know, depression, you know, in a, in a time where we have a great economy and, and so much opportunity. And a lot of this is driven by social media because it's manipulative. And so, you know, I think it's time that the government realizes that if 2 billion people are going to use a platform and the platform's attitude is we're not going to please anything on it, basically, if it, if it hurts our revenue, um, it's time to step in because you can't do that on television or radio or any other medium. Mm -hmm. And social media is as powerful or more powerful than any other communication tool today. Mm -hmm. So it needs regulation and Facebook is flat out abusive uh, to our societies for their profit. And, and Ross, just to be really clear here, your experience with Facebook when you do advertise on it is, is it, there's a lot of, uh, there's a, ro a lot of regulation, a lot of fact yeah. checking. Uh, and it's, it's mostly recent, like, because I'm on the news a lot, like this channel, and we'll post these links on our Facebook page. And then if we want to boost those links through advertising so more people can see it, Facebook reviews them because Facebook doesn't want news on their site from third parties anymore. But they, they look at every appearance that we post, and yet they won't take a blatant lie political ad off their site. I, 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 the, hmm. the mentality or the... The thought process of Zuckerberg is so tone deaf and amoral that I don't even know if he's like a human being, if he's just like a computer. Ross, we will leave it there. Good to catch up with you. Appreciate your views always. Thank you.